everyone, and welcome to this Thursday edition of Bears Blitz, brought to you by Jimmy Giles, alongside former Bears offensive lineman Dan Jiggins. You know him well, William Jackson here with you. And after being away from Soldier Field for the past three weeks, counting the bye, the Bears are finally back home against the Lions. Dan, is a little revenge on the Bears' agenda, would you say? Well, you know, you'd like to think uh, maybe that they got a little something more important than last week to make sure you win this one. Oh, that is huge right there. Well, here's what's on tap over the next 60 minutes here on Bears Blitz. We'll bring in ChicagoBears.com senior writer Larry Mayer live from Hallis Hall to talk about the improved Bears defense. Then we're going to hear from former Bears safety Chris Harris as he gets set for his Lions debut right here in Chicago. That'll be interesting. And later on, star linebacker Lance Briggs takes to the podium to talk about how he and the defense plan on getting their revenge against Detroit on Sunday. Plus, we will put Dan Jiggers on the spot, as we always do, with your questions in our Ask Dan segment. But first, we hear from the Bears defensive captain and face of the franchise, Brian Erlacher. Lack and his teammates have a reason to be optimistic heading into the Lions game because they've been playing some good ball as of late. Let's go to the podium. We play pretty good at home, though. All right, Lack and Dan, in your opinion, is this Bears defense a lot better or different than the one that faced the Lions before? Well, I think it's they're doing what they're supposed to do. In the visiting locker room, but it's going to be fun. Wow, Chris Harris back at Soldier Field wearing a Lions uniform. That will be a little different. Welcome back to Bears Blitz, brought to you by Jimmy Johns. And without further delay, let's head up to Hallis Hall, where we find ChicagoBears.com senior writer Larry Mayer. And Larry, how about Chris Harris coming back as a Lion? Yeah, that is unusual, guys, but it isn't unprecedented. And that's going to be a huge key for them on defense, obviously. No doubt. And Larry, how much momentum do you think the Bears will take from this last game against Philadelphia? Because when you play Philadelphia that tough, you have to feel good about yourselves and containing those guys. And now you go up against a Lions team, as Dan said, not the same team, not the same speed merchants. It'll be a little different for them, huh? Well, I don't know if it's just the fact that they beat Philadelphia, but I think it's the fact gold about the Penn State situation. They shared their unique perspective having played for Joe Paterno. All that's on ChicagoBears.com today. Okay, Larry, we appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, guys. Thanks. All right. Time for another break here on Bears Blitz. When we return, we'll head back up to Hallis Hall to talk with John Moon Mullen of CSNChicago.com. But first, here is Bears radio play-by-play -play man Jeff Joniak's keys to the game this Sunday. ChicagoBears.com presents Jeff Joniak's Keys to the Game, brought to you by Ford. Hi again, everybody. Jeff Joniak, and welcome back to ChicagoBears.com. I think we have to, everybody has to turn their game up another notch. Yeah, this is indeed money time in the NFL as teams try to position themselves for a playoff spot. No doubt the Bears' D has been playing better as of late, but Lance Briggs says, contrary to what people may think, it's the same old Bears' D as before. No changes, just uh, executing better. Coming up on Bears Game Night Live, London calling and the Bears answered. A hard-fought victory that took all 60 minutes. We'll hear from Lovey and Matt Forte was mic'd up in our sounds of the game. All that served with some tea and crumpets right now on Bears Game Night Live on the Chicago Bears Network. Good evening, team. Welcome to this international edition of Bears Game Night Live. William Jackson in for Luke Canellis. Now, with the Bucks leaving for England on Monday and the Bears leaving on Friday, a lot was made of who did it the right way. Well, as one player said at Hallis Hall this week, whichever team wins is the one who got it right. Let's go to the action for you. And a great game it was on this particular day. Bears and Bucks from historic Wembley Stadium, 76,000 in attendance. First quarter, Bears strike first. Matt Forte with the handoff gets to the outside. Watch one quick move right here. Then he says, let me get you again right there. And he'll take it 32 yards for the score. Seven nothing Bears with the lead. Later in the first, Cutler back to pass. But you know what? Tanara Jackson says, I have other thoughts as Mary and Barbara can't hold on. But Jackson can, taking it back the other way, deep into Bears territory. Tampa Bay definitely threatening here. But on the very next play, 
I want you to watch this one. Mike Williams wants the ball, but Chris Conte says, you guys drafted me high for a reason, gets the pick, going back in the other direction. But the celebration is short-lived. Want to know why? Here's why. Forte can't get out of the end zone. Rondé Barber, Adrian Claiborne getting for the safety. 7-2 is the score. A rugby count, huh? Second quarter, Chicago driving. A lot of people have been wondering where Roy Williams has been. He's right here as he holds on for that one for the touchdown, 25 yards, 14-2 is the count third quarter now another strong drive for the Bears culminating with Marion Barber taking the handoff and he says get off of me into the end zone for the score 21 five at this point and it seems like the game is in hand but fourth quarter Bucks mount a comeback it starts with a color interception Corey Lynch will tip it to himself gets it to go and takes it back to the 21 yard line that will set up Josh Freeman he looks to Kellen Winslow and I tell you this back shoulder stuff works big time as it does there they missed the two point conversion however 21 11 the score after a three and out Bucks threat again Freeman to Briscoe in the corner gotcha baby he will score this thing 24 yard pass and catch 21 18 the score seven minutes left the Bears need to sustain a drive Matt Forte says get it to me and I'll do all I can to help the cough watch the move as he'll take it down inside the five yard line that will set up a Robbie goal field goal and Robbie is right on target hits that with under two minutes left 24 to 18 Bucks need a touchdown but Josh Freeman is good for coming back he's done it eight times oh how about this this in the fourth quarter or either in overtime but DJ Moore says not on this occasion and to all a good night Bears win it final count for you in this one is 24 to 18 and the guys are feeling good about that here are your final stats brought to you by Lexus and the most glaring is rushing yardage. The Bears ran for 177 yards compared to just 30 for the Bucks. Chicago with nearly 400 yards of total offense on the day. Now Lovey always says if the Bears can get the turnover battle and win it, they'll win the game. Well, they did just that 4-2 and they were all interceptions. Well, our Bears game night live crew over in London covering today's affair. So what do they have to say about the Bears huge win? Let's find out. Here's Luke Nellis, Jeff Joniak, and of course, Tom Thayer in the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Super Bowl 42 most valuable player, Eli Manning. <laughs> Randy, okay. I thought that was a Plasco Burris highlight film there. <laughs> I know, as you look back at it, right? Now, first and foremost, were you guys surprised? Are you surprised? <laughs> All right. Now, Eli, when we talk about winning a Super Bowl and you look at your family, your father, Archie, played ball, your brother, Peyton, got a Super Bowl win before you did. And they say that's the pinnacle. When you do that, that's it. When did you actually realize that, you know what, we won the Super Bowl? Was it right after with all the accolades, or was it that quiet moment by yourself? You know, there, it, uh, it kind of hits you a couple times. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, obviously, right after the touchdown, the plaque score, I was excited, but I knew it wasn't over yet with, with Tom Brady and Randy Moss on the other side. But, uh, you know, finally, when we got the ball back with one second left on the clock, and you know, I kind of knew it. It, it, it hit a little bit and uh, right there. And then there's one scene I'm kind of standing on the stage before I go get to hold the, the uh, Lombardi trophy. And it, it kind of hits you right there. No one was around. No one could get to me. And, you know, you kind of start to uh, realize what just, what just uh, occurred. And then um, kind of later on that night, I uh, got back to the hotel. And we had a little uh, party with all my, all my friends and family. And you kind of walk into the room and everybody hugs you and your, and your dad and brothers are there. So all those times it, it hits you and you... Uh, just uh, you know, realize what you what you've accomplished. Well, appreciate it, guys. And we're talking football with the Tribs, David Haw and David. I tell you, as the draft quickly approaches, we have to talk about the Bears. And the first thing when you think about the Bears, they begin off-season training to yep. an extent this past week. Brian Urlacher, a no show. Is it all about the money, especially with Lance getting the big deal? Well, it is about the money. Okay, now when we talk about another player who commands respect and is in for a big payday. Tommy Harris entering his last year of his rookie contract, and they say this guy, three-time Pro Bowler, has been underpaid for a while. Is it time to get it done, and is it imperative to get it done before the season gets underway? I think there's a sense of urgency. There's an old saying, if you don't learn from past experiences, there's a very good chance you'll repeat them. So with that in mind, Mike Brown opted to pull himself out of last Sunday's game versus Detroit when he felt some discomfort in the calf area, something he admits he probably would not have done earlier in his career. 
And if this past bye week has anything to do with it, Devin says he should be refreshed. That's because he took time out away from football and celebrated his birthday with family and friends. And the Bears' mindset at linebacker is set up for success, with each of the backers expected to be able to multitask. On KCTV 5. to the Nebraska Furniture Mark Chiefs Locker Room Show. And again, the gang is all here. All pro tight end Tony Gonzalez. How about it? Yeah. Luis Leisick is here. And I'm William Jackson. And talking about a nice atmosphere, big win over the Chargers. You guys came out and did it in every phase of the game, huh? Mm -hmm. Huge win, huge win. What a great way to get the season started off right against a good football team. Donnie Edwards, I talked to him all week. He said that <laughs> defense was ready for it. <laughs> Not, re not ready enough. <laughs> Welcome back to the Nebraska Furniture Mark Chief Locker Room Show right here on site. We're in the store, middle of the store. You can come out here and just have a ball, everything you want in electronics to watch these guys on television. You can do it. All pro tight end Tony Gonzalez.